Hi, this is Tony Bradshaw to talk through the process of 3D printing flutes. First, you should know you are going to fail and it might hurt. This is my thumb. I did bleed while working with a 3D printer. It's taken blood, sweat, tears, and uh, a little bit of loss of sleep. But you can also know there's a huge amount of student investment in the process. We decided to let them 3D print on top of the flutes with a 3D printing pen. This way they wouldn't ruin the flutes where they might damage something when they did the programming itself, but they got to put some 3D print onto it. The school has three of these pens. We use the Tech Boss model RP500A if you're looking for that. They first designed on paper. They did a lot of the actual put on there with Sharpies. You could just do that if you don't have the 3D printing pens. And then they practiced on paper before they actually put it onto the instrument. The designing program we used is Flashpoint 5. And we just search for an ocarina online. So you go online, search for ocarina, which is the type of flute, and then bring it into Flashpoint 5 or whatever designing program you use for your 3D printer to make the adjustments that you want to make. We tested around on printing more than one flute at a time and found we could get four in there. I also chose to stop having it print up the supports and have them go onto the air hole or the finger holes and that way it, uh, the instrument is cleaner uh, when it prints out. Speaking of printing it out and the supports, when your project is about this far along you want to make sure it's not moved all around on you and that the supports are building like they're supposed to be building. There could be problems if it's not leveled correctly. You do a quick level. There could be issues if the, um, the filament has got it bumped or been jarred in some way, and then you're, you're building something that won't work later. At the school, we have two 3D printers. They were brought to us by a grant that we have. I'm going to go into some of the printing failures next. Some are specific to this kind of printer, and other things are just ones you're going to run into with all 3D printers. In can't read the small writing. It says it's a Flash Forge Finder Lite. We found that our larger reams that we ordered later don't fit on the inside, but it does have a mount for it to mount on the outside, which has caused a couple of problems such as this one where it wrapped all around the back and stopped being, stopped printing. <laughs> and then there was this day. It actually happened twice with this ream. When it was brand new, very full, and first on there, it would start to unwrap underneath uh, because it was loose. I learned the way to avoid doing this is to have it feed in where it's pulling up on a, when you're looking at it, clockwise direction instead of counterclockwise. And when I say looking at it, it means looking at the ream from the back of the printer and have it pull up and turn the ream clockwise. To help you avoid further printer failures, let me tell tell you some of the things that we have figured out. One is to make sure your print job has enough supports. There is an auto support button on the software we use and probably any software that you would end up using as well. Another one is to not run out of filament. You can pause the print, unload that filament, reload it, which learn how to do that on your printer before you do a big long print. These flutes take five hours each. So when we're building two at a time, it's 10 hours. We are looking at building four at a time and that's a lot of time. So you wanna make sure you're not gonna run out of filament. We've figured out we can get almost 20 flutes from one ream of filament. And when we're getting close to that, we just change it out. We change it out early and that way it, um, it goes all the way. Every time the filament tangles, 
it can stop the printing. And so I listen, I notice, I look, and I can see if it's even just partly covering and it needs to untangle. Again, I stop the print job, unload it, untangle it. Even if it's just under one other one, it's going to snag and it will stop the print. Lastly, making sure it's a level surface, not too high, not too low. When we first printed, we didn't know about the load and unload for the filament, and we just kind of cut one off and let it feed through and thought we'd feed the next one in. That is the incorrect way of doing it. And we ended up with a printer that wouldn't work anymore because the filament had been pushed down but couldn't be pushed further down, and we couldn't line up the next one. The printer had to be taken apart and that filament then pushed down through it while allowing it to load and then load the next one. So just load and unload the filament as the instructions say. And if you don't have instructions yet, find them. Now that we've printed flutes, we're looking at storage. I have a big question mark here because we're still trying some stuff out, but let me describe. I have found I can use the storage I've used for other flutes, the recorders. We're looking at the possibility of creating, like, an, the eggs uh, for egg shakers can go inside of egg cartons. So creating these little cartons, maybe even out of egg foam from a fabric store, that they can just rest into inside of a box or location on a shelf, a drawer and store them. These are still early ideas, so I'm not showing you a picture yet. This video ends with a time lapse of two ocarinas being built. This is 10 hours of building time, and I did compose the music in GarageBand that you will hear. Enjoy.